In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Today I am in the clinic of Professor Manfred Tetz. He is one of the most famous eye doctors here in Germany and he performed over 70,000 eye operations. Hello. Did you perform all of them with the laser? No, obviously not, because the laser has been applied to cataract surgery just recently in the last couple of years and the 70,000 operations were accumulated over some years, as you may imagine. So the laser is a more recent development uh, but it's becoming more and more important also for our cataract surgery. Let's stay with cataract. Cataract means it's a disease of the interocular lens. And, and do, do you always have to perform surgery in this kind of disease? Well, the best would be to avoid uh, the cataract formation. But since it's an, a matter of aging, uh, the lens does get cloudy over time. And the current therapy, although there has been a lot of trials to avoid cataract formation, the current therapy is still the lens surgery. And is it always better to use a laser in cataract surgery instead of a scalpel? Uh, it depends on what you think about better, but if we define the precision of a laser, the way it can open the capsule of the lens, the way it can actually uh, partitionate the lens in little particles that you can then suck out of the eye. It gives you a lot of extra surgical control. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you perform this kind of surgery? What, 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 what are the steps in cataract surgery? Well, first of all, the laser is applied to the eye with a contact lens and then the lens capsule of the original lens is opened, circular then the lens is partitioned in little particles and then by using a suction system and fluid these particles are removed from the eye and then the lens is replaced by an artificial lens. Many of our viewers find it very frightening that somebody is coming with a knife to the eye and doing a surgery with a laser on the eye. So um, uh, is, what, what do you feel during this kind of operation? Well, obviously we use anesthesia. There are multiple forms of anesthesia from a topical just drop anesthesia also to a so-called peribulbar injection anesthesia. And also the patient can get something to calm him down intravenously by an anesthesiologist. So, so it's like a colonoscopy for instance? Yes, the surgery is not painful, but even after such, so many operations I still uh, consider every single patient that has to go to an eye doctor to get surgery on the eye. You know, I understand that they're frightened. Yeah, especially if you think about lasers, you, are, you think about Star Wars, like destroying the Death Star. <laughs> this is one of, one of our viewers, Gilberto Salas Tiendeta of Mexico, um, thinks of. And he wants to know, um, uh, is it something in common? Is it dangerous? Well, that's a very interesting statement because I'm sometimes using that to explain that too much of something can be dangerous. Of right. course, if you use a real big laser, you can actually uh, make a planet explode. But this is what the precision in ophthalmology in our uh, discipline has come to, that we're using actually multiple lasers and always have the very fine dosage. So the laser for the eye, as of our current knowledge, is not dangerous. You do not um, only change lenses in cataract. There are other eye diseases where you uh, change lenses. Which yeah. one are there? Yes. Uh, if you have a refractive problem on your eye, so you know, you are highly myopic, you have astigmatism, which is a different curvature of the cornea in different directions, or even if you're hyperopic, um, meaning that you are actually far-sighted, then uh, there is an option to correct this by um, laser surgery, by so-called refractive surgery. You change the optical refraction of the eye from a disease, from a mistake, an error, inborn to normal, to what we call emetropia, normal vision. All these procedures have in common that they don't swap the lens, but that they reshape the cornea. And which kind of diseases do you use this? Well, the cornea is the window, the curved window that we have in our eye to look outside. And that cornea is a very specific tissue. And reshaping means that, for example, in the case of myopia, you have to remove tissue from the center, which was shown also in the illustrations. 
And if you do so, you can correct a refractive error. Now, in myopia, for example, these refractive errors are expressed in numbers, minus 1 to minus 8, minus 8 meaning more myopia, the higher my myopia. And usually the laser reshapes in the area between, minus, between minus 1 and minus 8, maximum minus 10. Above that, other means have to be used because otherwise you endanger the cornea. And, and what are the differences between the different methods? Well, if you do laser surgery, any kind of, you basically remove tissue, which is then reshaping the curvature and correcting the error. If the refractive error is above the minus 8, minus 10, you have to use different means, for example, putting an additional lens in the eye, not taking the own lens out, but putting an additional lens in. If the patient is older and the own lens is not working anymore, you are presbyopic, age-dependent, uh, farsightedness, then you can exchange the whole lens for a lens that gives you both near and far vision. If they're coming up new procedures all the time, um, it seems to me, so, so how do I as a patient can decide which kind of procedure I'd like to have? Well, like always, it's not difficult to find the right doctor or the right center to do your treatments and right. that doesn't just apply to the eye. Uh, but there are means uh, you can actually use uh, media information about uh, doctors check about um, also the um, uh, different clinics as they have been tested and checked. You can use also blocks, but I caution patients to use blocks where you have only one, two, three, four opinions. You should use blocks or information systems where you have at least a couple hundred information right. which are supposed to be more informative and representative. And there's always personal recommendation. Uh, and at the end, you're sitting in front of a doctor and you have to find the trust that he will do the right consultation with you and also the right treatment. So it's more like a gut feeling you have to... Have gut to, feeling sometimes right. help, but recommendation yeah. is not bad. Right. Before you go to the laser and do the procedure, you have to do some diagnostic tests. What kind of diagnosis tests do you do? Well, there's an abundance of diagnostic tests and measurements, but especially, for example, with the laser treatment, we have the option to do what we call a wavefront analysis. Wavefront takes like an optical fingerprint of your individual eye, and we are not just able to correct what we can correct with glasses, the refractive error, we can actually correct minute little irregularities in your eye by a so-called wavefront guided ablation using that fingerprint. And all these measurements do take some time and have to be taken, but they are usually not dangerous or hurting, they're just simple optic measurements. Thank you, Professor Tietz, for inviting me into your clinic.